So this is my 3D printer. It is an Artillery Sidewinder X1 and I want to tell you about a little mod that I did for it. So as many Sidewinder owners know there's something called the Wagster mod but that's not the one I'm going to go into detail. When I installed this BL Touch bed leveler it meant I had to remove the LED that was inside of this um, carriage because I needed to use the conductors for this BL Touch. And as many of you guys know I love lighting so so I decided to add some LEDs back into it. To do this upgrade, there are a couple of things you need to know about, a couple of requirements. So you need sensorless homing, so I used a TMC2209 stepper driver so I could use sensorless homing, which freed up this header right here. Um, so I don't need to use this for the uh, sensor right there. Because I used the BL touch right here, that means I no longer need the cable that was connected to this side for the sensorless homing going down. I can reuse that cable and the cable that used to be connected the cable that used to be connected to the Z axis sensor I reused um, for my LED strip. So the other requirements that you need to have is you're going to need some type of buck converter which is going to drop the voltage down from 24 volts to 5 volt and in the board that I have in here which is the SKR 1.4 turbo there is an optional um, DC DC converter which um, gives you enough current so you can run LEDs and other things but at, in this talk form you don't want to run it off the board because it might not be able to handle all the LEDs that I have in here I currently have 20 LEDs so you can do that for me I bought one about three or four months ago from AliExpress and it still hasn't gotten here I don't know if it ever will I mean like shipping from China has been really slow with uh, the coronavirus but um I got impatient and I just went ahead and I got like a little a little buck converter like this um, set the voltage for 5 volts and then I uh, just mounted inside the board plugged plug the input to the 24 volt um, power supply and then I wired the output to the board directly and I would not recommend going that route unless you know what you're doing um, and you have a soldering iron are pretty handy I would just go with what they have that DC DC converter so the LEDs I used were 60 LEDs per meter. That's this style right here. These are WS2812Bs, so these are dressable or NeoPixel LEDs, and they're fairly popular. Furthermore, the nice thing is um, m most like, you know, off-the-shelf bulk strips come with what's called a JST SM connector, which is this. So normally soldered on, but I clipped it off, and it's actually installed right there. So you can actually you can get by without even soldering because you can get this get the connector that's already attached to it, slide it in. Granted, I had to remove this stepper driver, so you have to remove the stepper driver, slid it in, and then I wired it up to the old um, adapter cable that went from JST to JST, sorry, JST, it went from JST SM to JST XH, and then I just took out that cable and connected it down here, and it's zip-tied, and then put the extra into here slid it in and then on the board I have the plug that normally goes into the sensor and I plugged it into the, the RGB port on the SCAR 1.4 board and you do have to add it into your firmware that you're using Neo NeoPixel RGB and I think there's also a place where you specify how many LEDs so one cool thing about this that I didn't know at the time when I added it in there's actually Logic's program in the, in the firmware to to actually start lighting up LEDs as it's heating up. So I'm starting the the print, so it's first heating up the bed, and as you can see the LEDs right here are starting to light up. And if you didn't notice earlier when I turned on the system the it went through like a green and like red and I don't know if blue came up or not, but that's what happens on the startup sequence. And so it after it goes all the way through, it then the color starts to switch on the um, on the bed so so it does add add a bit of functionality because you can tell like you know how it's coming so and then I think it stays there for a little bit so yeah the color slowly changing as you can see shifting that's the nice thing about NeoPixels because you can individually address each LED then this might take a Now it's doing the homing. 
and this will probably be fast forwarded through. Now I'm doing the auto bed level. So I like to heat my bed up first. So the bed's actually heating up to a higher temp. So normally the by default goes to 60, but um, I have PETG in this, so it's uh, set to 75 for the bed. So that's what it's doing right now. And now the hot end's starting to heat up. And you're seeing that the colors continue to change. So it gets to a certain point with the color changing when the bed's heating up, and then it. Um, and this is all done through the in the firmware automatically. So this was something I found out. You know, I wanted LEDs in here. I had no idea there'd be like any logic or you know what all they would do. So they did pre-program logic, which is neat. So yeah, this is again plugged directly into my um, my board. So it gets you know kind of closer to red. It's pink. Heating up to 2:30. So, I guess when it's really red, that means it's hot. And so th that's one neat thing. I mean, it's it is semi-functional. It's cooler than func as cool as it is functional, but the real functional part is coming right up. So, as you can see, the lights turn to to white. Um, when to when it goes to printing. So the nice thing about this is, I have this little, like little, camera right here that I use for keeping an eye on it when I'm using OctoPrint. And I can turn off all the lights in the basement, and still be able to see what's going on because it has the LEDs right there. So yeah, it's kind of neat how it. You know, kind of has adds functionality, quite a bit of light. So yeah, it's it's fairly fairly simple. You can get get by with no soldering. You just buy the you just buy these LED strips, 60, 60 LEDs per meter. The and you don't you don't want to cut off the um, the JST connector. So you but you so you cut it off about twenty. Um, you cut it about a length of about twenty or twenty. You make sure it's enabled in the firmware. You remove the stepper driver to slide in it, slide the strip in. Um, then you use the the homing sensor for the x-axis, and you plug it into the y-axis and connect it. So it's basically an adapter cable. And then you plug this uh, the cable that comes from the y-axis into the RGB port of the SKR 1.4 or 1.4T. And you, again, you do require um, some type of buck converter, whether you're lucky enough to be able to get your hands on the one that just plugs directly into the board or the other one that um, or the other one that uh, you have to wire it yourself um, with a normal buck converter which was a little bit more of a pain but I highly suggest the other route it's gonna be about the same price and a lot less work well thank you very much for tuning in if you want to hear more stuff like this feel free to um, subscribe and check out some of my other videos I'm planning on adding a little bit more content and I'm gonna be doing like a a six month like review of this printer as you can see I've done a few updates and you know I don't really think they all that really needs it all that much so well thank you have a nice day